This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. All right, welcome everyone. Jeff Orovitz here. Happy to be here with you today. Angela joins me as well because we've got a ton of stuff to cover here. Um, a, a lot of Arizona news items that I want to hit on. I was looking at the calendar, which you, you took some time to um, find. <laughs> it's always hard. You go to these election sites and you're like, seriously. They still have, oh. they still have uh, the dates for the primary. Yeah. And the early ballot and the, you know, the result, the results is fine. The yeah, results are still. But it's the calendar for the primary, which was last month. It's over. People yeah. update the site. I this is go time, general. man. I always get frustrated at the operation of these websites. I got to be honest with you because, um, you know, Yavapai's was a disaster. It was like trying to get the results. You know, I'll give Coconino at least had the statewide form where you, you know, it's Yeah, the they've same. had that in the past. Yeah, and Yavapai's, Yavapai's like this 30-page document you got yeah, to sift right. through to see results. Fix that for the election. It's go time. You got, you know, a few month period where people are looking every two years. Um, look at some companies, some corporations, some people that sell stuff that actually have to make a profit for a living. And you'll notice that they, the websites are simplified, generally speaking, mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. a reason. When it's election go time, make it more simple. I'm telling you, why can't you figure this out? Yeah. You yeah. know? So anyway, after shuffling around for a while, we got the election dates and upcoming, um, you know, this should be on their front page. Okay, here's what's coming next. You yeah, know? and we were just Here's curious when the early yeah. ballots when early go early out ballots and, and yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah, so October 9th is the number, the day. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the number too, the date. October 9th, ballots are being mailed out and, um, uh, you know, the, the, the voting happens. You know, it's the election actually, because we, everybody thinks November 5th, yeah, that is election day, but 85% of the people have already voted by that point. The election mm -hmm. for all, well, maybe all practical purposes is over. Although I wouldn't discourage you from going November 5th, because if this election is like any election, uh, the elections in the past in Arizona, particularly like the U.S. Senate. So Carrie Lake versus Ruben Gallego. Um, would Carrie Lake lose the gubernatorial election by 10,000 votes? Yeah. It is, like is going to matter November 5th. And yeah. quite frankly, and I'm trying to get the message to... Uh, and I will talk to Carrie Lake. I want to talk to her personally, and I hope somebody's listening from her camp. And then we'll get her on the program a few times. The 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 difference for this election may very well be in in your hands here in, in northern and central Arizona. Seriously, because mm -hmm. it might be a, a, a few thousand votes mm -hmm. that we're talking about, and rural Arizona. Central Arizona, Northern Arizona, um, even even Western and Eastern Arizona, Yuma, uh, basically everywhere outside of Pima and uh, Maricopa County. Okay, that's where all the concentration of votes are. But the cream, let's call it, is is us. You know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, probably five hundred thousand people in those areas that can very well make the difference. So I hope that they understand that. And I hope they take serious that the vote, the election will very much probably be decided by this area and the people listening, you know, to this show and the reach um, within, you know, uh, I'm talking Yavapai County, I'm talking Navajo County, I'm talking Gila County, um, uh, Coconino County, maybe not as much, but Cocon <laughs> Coconino, it will be Coconino County. There's still Yuma. a lot of voters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, maybe not as much for like for Carrie Lake as far as Republicans, but, but right. it could. There's still a lot of Republicans in that mm -hmm. in that area. So I hope they get that message because I think I think they miss. It. Not, I'm not I'm not specifically signaling her out in her campaign. I'm think talking in general mm -hmm. in the Trump campaign mm -hmm. may make it being a swing state with 11 electoral votes here. You know, Arizona. It's, it, it could very well be decided here. It mm -hmm. could very well be decided in Yavapai County, Coconino County. As to who the next president is. Yeah. I right. hope they get that. Mm -hmm. And I hope they understand that. Yes, the cities are important, but it's all those rural areas too, in these especially swing states. I don't well, know. And a lot of times the voters in those areas, you know, like we're in and many others are in, they, they tend to feel uh, forgotten about yes. and not listened to. And you get the right person who does that and people like that. Yes. And they vote for that person because of that. So... It is important to it, 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 recognize that. If I had Carrie Lake's ear, for example, in her race, uh, yes, there's a focus and a certain message for the Maricopa County and the masses down there. But for rural Arizona, again, 
you know, the Prescott, all of you, you know, I don't want to miss anybody. I just start name dropping, but Prescott area, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, over to Winslow, Williams, um, is smaller communities, Seligman. I, I know I'm missing some, but all of that. And then, like I said, down to Yuma. The, the message should be in those areas tailored towards, and I hope that they're serious about it too and sincere about it, is I hear you rural Arizona. I hear you mm-hmm. small community Arizona. You're forgotten about in the Maricopa mess. You know, they, they all and do the attack. And not just the, he, here in Arizona, but nationwide. Nation, nationwide. But I'm just talking, yeah, I'm just right. talking Kerry Lake's campaign and, right. and even Trump's campaign in Arizona. And it, mm-hmm. yes, it does resonate nationwide. Um, especially if you hit the swing state, you only got to do this in, in, in four, five, six states mm-hmm. and the rural areas usually make the difference. But here's my message. If, if Carrie Lake's folks are, are listening, it's you've, you've got, you've got your Maricopa message. I get it. And then I hope you have a sincere message for Northern and central Arizona and all those other rural areas. That's not just room Gallego sucks. Room Gallego sucks. We know, I know he sucks. <laughs> I know he's a far left guy, right? Mm-hmm. And he's going to bring far left policies uh, to the country and to the state. But I would be hitting on, you are the forgotten about people. And I ain't going to forget about you because I'm up there all the time. I, uh, you know, I, I live in Payson too, or wherever she's got a place. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I get that you guys are forgotten about and overshadowed by Maricopa County. That's going to change. And I hope it sincerely does. That's going to change, you know, when I'm your Senator, um, you know, for Arizona and in DC. And also, I, I hear you, especially moms out there, especially families, because I think that's a, a message that needs to be softened a little bit for her is to, do mm-hmm. you disagree with that, to, 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 to moms and to, to the female voters? I mean, yeah, do you feel I, like- I agree with that, that she can be, you know, very strong and yeah. some and that's women fine. don't- we, That's what I yeah, love about it. No, nothing wrong with that. That's just her. That's yep. who she is. But she is a mom and yes. someday might be a grandmother and- yes. Um, you know, women. And she's probably like us and thinking like maybe just a little while longer for on the grandma oh, for side. for sure. I don't know how old her kids are, <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. just, women no. identify with, with no, that. No, I hear you. So, so, hey, I hear you. I know you're having trouble with inflation. I know you're having trouble finding daycare. I know housing and housing is a, a huge affordable problem um, in rural Arizona. I, I get that our, our financial system and our monetary policy has screwed you up. You go into the store and, you know, you're getting shafted on how much it's cost now under, under um, you, you could say even Guy, Gallego's leadership and under Harris's leadership. And I know you're struggling. I, I, I've been there too. I'm a mom. Yeah. You know, this is, this is what I'm not hearing yet in especially rural, central, you know, northern mm-hmm. Arizona and other places in the state that I think will swing enough votes that we won't have super uber leftist Ruben Gallego as our senator who's now playing the cool guy centrist and he's full of crap, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I, I don't hear it yet. I hope we do. I haven't heard it in elections past. Mm-hmm. They tend to drop the same messaging in these rural areas that they're trying to play in the, in the big, you know, Maricopa mm-hmm. Phoenix area. Yeah. Not going to work. And a lot of them are, are the stump speeches. Yes. I'm going to do this. I'm yeah, going to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And that's important too, but it's also important to connect with yes. people Where's on a personal heart? level yeah. and, um, you know, make <laughs> like look more human yeah. than yeah. just a uh, robot talking yes. points. Yes. And I'm not accusing her or anyone else of, of no, doing that necessarily, no. but it just, It's the same kind of routine over and over. Bring the heart, understand rural Arizona, what they're going through, that they feel overshadowed by Maricopa County, that they're, they're dying when it comes to housing prices. Not that I think the government can do a lot about that, but there's a lot of things they shouldn't do that they mess it up as far as monetary policy. You can't get that deep. Well, even if, you know, housing's an issue, even if they can't fix the housing situation, if you fix other things, then it, it relieves some pressure off your budget yes. to pay, yes. you know, have the more expensive housing because the government, you know, if they can't do anything exactly. for them. I know your yeah. rural values are under attack. Yeah. You know, that things are happening in small communities that never used to happen there that happened in a big city. It's that. It's not the, we know, most people know Gallegos is a leftist, like I said, and his policies are radical. And, 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 and that's going to be pointed out. How do you connect with, to get those extra, you know, five, 10,000 votes that are probably needed to win this that quite frankly was the difference in the last election, mm-hmm. especially in, with in Lake's case, but other races as well. Yeah. I, I hope they do that or else we're, we're in trouble. And Trump's team too has to do the same thing mm-hmm. in Arizona. 
Yeah. And I've done my best to kind of yell that out and, and, and get that out, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure if they're hearing it. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope yeah. they do. All right. Love your thoughts. Didn't throw out the email yet. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Bring the heart, right? right. Bring the heart. Right. Your mom or your dad, if you're running it, you know, a mm-hmm. grandpa, if you're Trump's case, bring that heart into those rural areas. And I think there's enough of us to actually make this happen right. and not have the country, you know, burning down like, you know, Britain's burning down right now and going down a leftist socialist hellhole. Yeah. You know? And I think Lake might have somewhat of an advantage already because she does have the statewide name ID yeah. as opposed to at least in this area of the state, Gallego does not. Yeah. Who's this guy? Because I, I didn't. I don't know who he is because he, he represents the Southern uh, whatever district down there yeah. right now. Yeah. So people there know him, but not up yeah. here really. No, and I'm so seeing- she, and she, you know, should capitalize on she that. Sh- she should. And I hope she does. I think she can. And I know she's been up here. Um, we saw her down in Verde Valley recently mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and I actually talked to her yeah. down there and she was actually going to a local restaurant, going to, you know, some local places. Yeah. Get that out there. I know these communities, I, you know, because yeah. I don't think Gallego does. He's, no, yeah, but he he's doesn't. going to, he's going to do it though. He's going to try because he, he has he, to, he, 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 well, he knows. Well, the advice I'm saying, honestly, I hope his team isn't listening is the same advice that would work mm-hmm. for him. Mm-hmm. And, and I think they're all missing that every election. Mm-hmm. They miss that. And then we've, we've gotten sunk into this, um, purplish heading blue stage in Arizona's politics that I don't think we should be at if they would just get out, get out of the Maricopa focus, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of other votes out there and, 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 and they're ripe for the picking, shall we say politically. Um, if you just get that out there and you're sincere about it, you truly believe it because most people can tell if you're full of crap. And I think, Mm -hmm. I I think she is just, I'm not, I'm not hearing that yet. And that's what we do need to hear going, going forward, quite frankly. Okay. Again, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com and, you know, as she's driving around, if she needs some some good tires for the for the bus or the van or the vehicle or whatever, which we all do, which we all do, you're all buying tires. Um, why don't you buy tires from the place that my family has been getting them for quite a few years now? Um, a company that's a multi generational company. I actually went to um, high school with some of the family members. Right, yeah. um, it's a small world. Go lightly tires. Go lightly tires. The tire professionals uh, that can get tires on your you know your passenger vehicles light. Tr- trucks, which light truck is kind of a funny word because some of those are actually monsters. Yeah. Now, you know? It's not They're exactly light compared light. to the new trucks yeah, that yeah, are monsters. Exactly. Um, but also if you're a contractor or your heavy equipment operator, shipping, things like that, go lightly tires are, are, are the folks that bring you the, the big tires, the ones that you see going down the road and you're like, whoo, wonder what that thing costs, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. but you need them. And that's how we, we function as a society is until they come up with the, the hovercraft all powered by uh, unicorns and rainbows and windmills. Um, yeah, we, the rubber literally, literally hits the road and, and go lightly tires. Um, they, they've done a great job for my family. I remember even years ago, I don't know if they still provide this, but we, we get our snow tubes from them because they have those inner oh, tubes for the yeah, big the uh, tires. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they still do that. I'll have to ask the folks at go lightly tires when winter comes around or for tubing, yeah. you know, down the creeks and stuff. Yeah. Those things last forever. Yeah. The sleds you, always crack oh, yeah, and they you bend get the tube. and break. Now there's no control. And it zips down, especially if you lube oh, it up a little bit. Out of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too. Anyway, go lightly tires. Uh, give them a call. Uh, 928 526 2266. 928 526 2266. Or go to golightlytire.com. Okay. Um, wow. That was my first thing, and I didn't get very far. Oh, by the way, October 9th is. Um, when the ballots drop, um, I should be around because October 7th, I think, is the beginning of duck season. Mm-hmm. That's another important date yeah. to mark on your calendar. You're excited, right? Because you're not going to go out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> She's I, like, I'll oh, have to man. cook it if you shoot. So yeah, no. we'll get, we'll get, maybe, I hope. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Soon Arizona News Roundup. Um, how does this guy call himself a Republican still? And I'm talking about, and here's the headline from um, the Arizona Republic, GOP. Mesa Mayor John Giles invited to Democrat tick. Sorry, tick. I always say Democrat. Right? Oh, I was. Like, yeah. What are you talking and about? This Democrat okay. tick Democratic. convention. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think he went to the Arizona rally already for um um what's her name 
Harris. Kamala, Kamala Harris, sorry, sorry. The Democrat pick next week. Is next week a convention? Is that coming up here? I think it was the 19th, it's a week after. But they, well, why even do it at this yeah. point? What a waste of time. I mean, you're just insulting people at this point because nobody got to vote for you. Yeah. Nobody got yeah. to vote for you, it's Kamala been Harris. It's determined. It is. It is yeah. determined. Yeah. So anyway, this guy, the mayor of Mesa, and Mesa, I thought, tended to trend towards Republican and more conservative, right? <laughs> He's the co-chair. He's a Republican. A Republican. John Giles. <sighs> Look at this picture. I'm a goober. I shouldn't say that, but hey, I'm I'm really a Democrat. <laughs> you just put the little word bubble in there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think they plant people like that on purpose. Do they? And yeah, they, they yeah. have them register as Republican. And yeah, he's really a Democrat. I touched, great, I touched him at the but, picture. Um, no, they do it on purpose, and then they can flaunt it and say, well, here's a Republican in Arizona who's chair of the Democrat yeah, yeah, for he's, Harris. He's co-chair of co-chair. the Republicans for Harris Committee. Republicans right? for Harris. And here's the quote, right. and I always love when these rhinos do this, and the Republican Party should just kick him out. Because Mm -hmm. it's not just like, oh, I did this once and I have just this strong feeling. I've got to support Harris because I can't stand Trump. I morally can't vote for Trump. I despise Trump, whatever the case may be for Mayor John Giles. Um, But this isn't the first time. This is a series. This is a history of him supporting Democrats. Just be a Democrat. It's okay, dude. It's okay to be a no, Democrat if you want. he couldn't win the election. Well, then go get a real job. He has to be a Republican get a real or else job he won't then. win. Okay, here's the quote. As a lifelong Arizonan and longtime Republican, I strongly believe in defending democracy and standing up for our personal freedoms. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance represent the greatest threat to American values and institutions that I have seen in my lifetime. And that's why I am committed to defeating him in November, Guile said in the written statement. Yeah, personal freedoms, that's yeah, yeah. that's bunk because, yeah. I mean, Biden was the one who was like, everyone must get a vaccine yeah. on COVID. Yeah. Everyone was, must wear a mask for yep. COVID. And I mean, personal freedoms, what? What are you talking about, yeah. dude? Personal freedoms? Yeah. So this guy has the nerve to come out and say, yeah, you, you, oh, personal. Trump's going to take that way. Trump was in office and everybody said he was going to become Hitler and everybody said he was going to, you know, never leave office. And it was the end of uh, the Republic, end of democracy, whatever they, these guys call it, the Democratic people and, and many others. And, and sure enough, he's gone. And Biden comes in and, and locks people down. Does the mask mandates kick? People left the military because he was forcing the vaccine on. Now they're trying to get him back, by the way, because they got a recruitment oh, problem. Yeah, they oh, please come, oh, yeah. please come back. Please come back. And here this guy supported that. Now, okay, what's his name again? Giles. Are you supporting, what's this What's this guy's name? Can't remember his name. I can't MVP? remember his name. Waltz. 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 Out of. Um, W-A-L-Z. W at Waltz. Yeah. Waltz. Yeah, Waltz. So never heard of him until like two days ago, two minutes ago. But man, this was a guy that was a COVID tyrant. In, in Wisconsin? In, 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 uh, yeah, in, in, no, he, in, in Minnesota. 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 Okay. You see, we can't I even remember. Know where who he is was. this guy? I don't know right? who he is. He's a COVID tyrant. And he watched cities burn down, Minneapolis, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. All that stuff that happened. Yeah. Oh, they're just, you know, it's, it's like the Baltimore mayor years ago. They're just, they're just venting, you yeah, know? Right. I don't know if he said that, but the Baltimore mayor years ago, they're just venting when they burn stuff down. You burn stuff down. It's, you're an arsonist. They burn stuff down. It's just, just venting. Yeah. <laughs> right? And mostly This peaceful. is the guy. This guy's a far leftist. So, so here, this Republican, supposed Republican in Arizona, Giles, of Mesa is like, oh, I, I, I've never seen this, uh, you know, the American values under such assault in my lifetime. T- talking about Trump, what about the assault on the American values that the left is constantly doing if you're a supposed Republican? Republicans should kick this guy out, censure him and kick him. I'm not saying you can't have, you know, you're, you're a Republican or Democrat can't say, I just can't vote for this person. But this guy did it. He's supporting Gallego, right? Yeah. Well, he, he's doing this repeatedly. He's so doing this that's the repeatedly. difference is it's yeah. not one thing Giles, or one person. It's many different people over many different elections. Yeah. He's, he supported, he supported Mark Kelly in, in 2022, you know, a similar group so of how Republicans. how can he get away with still be know, calling himself Republican? It's, it's ridiculous. Republicans get it together, who, whatever district or whatever area he's, he's in. Yeah. That, the that county deserves or a censure yeah. because he's not a Republican. Just go be a Democrat or an independent yeah. and, and then say what you want, but don't act like as a lifelong uh, Republican. Yeah. You know, I'm so conservative. That's why I'd rather have Kamala Harris and walls 
you know, the city burner over there. So, all right, love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Get some, com- I do have some comments I want to get to. I actually stacked them up. Um, so for once I will actually get to those. Um, hey, if you're refinancing, it's, it's looking a little better. It's looking more promising. Interest rates have come down. I think 30 year rates are like in the um, sixes right mm-hmm. now, the low sixes. Mm-hmm. That's good. Every little bit helps. Yeah, it right? was over 7%. And when your house costs $43 million now because of um, Harris's inflation, <laughs> that adds up. It makes it a little hard to make that $83,000 a month payment. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, though, um, I, don't, I don't know what the exact rates are. You should call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans because she does. And she also has access to the, the best programs out there. Uh, Nova Home Loans, Arizona's largest privately owned mortgage lender. And Kim Dawson, who's the girl who gets it done in Northern Arizona, I know because we've used her to refinance a... Um, investment property. Mention the Jeff Orvich show when you call Kim Dawson, get $250 off the lender's fee at closing. Call Kim at 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458 or go to novahomeloans.com slash Kim Dawson. Kim Dawson, NLS 697411, Nova Home Loans, NLS 3087, BK number 090242, equal housing opportunity, subject to credit approval, terms and conditions may apply. Back real quick, hang tight. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. All right. Yeah, this Waltz guy. Waltz. It needs a T. Waltz. Yeah, Waltz. but then it's a dance. Waltz. It dance. is a dance. It's a dance down the road of leftism hell. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. It's like right <laughs> over the cliff. Oh, this is so sad. I'm, I'm so worried about this election. I, I am because it's, I am too. I know people are saying not to be or they're not. Oh, be worried. I, uh, be worried. I mean, I think, yeah, people let their guard down because they're so confident that, I, you know, they just kind of get in their, their blinders on. Yeah. And then. Don't get the blinders yeah, on. Yeah, that, that um, doesn't turn out well. Yeah. The candidates need to be hitting areas that they're normally not hitting. The mm, people who are enthusiastic about a candidate need to be talking mm-hmm. to a neighbor and swayable people. Don't talk. Don't waste your time arguing with idiots. Don't mm-hmm. waste your time with, with somebody who has a sign outside saying that, you know, you should be able to abort a baby up till nine months and you should not be able to allow, you should not be able to have, have a gun. Um, you know, if, they, mm-hmm. if, if there's signs about that, if you're like, it's not worth your breath. Mm-hmm. I know everybody wants to try to have that debate and stuff and it's fine in, yeah. in some cases, but in this case, you got to find a person that's like kind of on the fence. You know, mm-hmm. find somebody that, you know, you got a relative that's like, I'm having a little bit of trouble here. You know, mortgage payments gotten high and gas bills high and food bills out of control. And yeah, why is this happening? You know, I'm so angry about it. Well, look at Harris, mm-hmm. you know, you want to know why it's happening and be, be armed with that, with those facts to be able to, 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 to share what she actually is mm-hmm. or Gallego. Gallego is there for all of this. Gallego caused the inflation. He voted for all this crap. He voted for 7 million people to, or not voted for, in action, you know, with the invasion, the border invasion, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Point it out. Go, go do that. Act like this election may actually matter because it actually does, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, a judge, I don't know if I have time for this one. I want to get to some of the Arizona resolutions, um, not resolutions, uh, initiatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a judge ruling when it comes to tipped workers and the minimum wage issue. And uh, there's at least 11 initiatives that are, are hitting the ballots, possibly as many as 14. Three of them are still in litigation, but I think all of them are going to make it and you're going to have 14 initiatives. I want to kind of quickly go over those. There's some movement in the state on towns and the state actually there's a new uh training requirement when it comes to atvs l oh, vehicles uh-huh. camp verde's looking at doing an, an ohv ordinance so you should be aware of that i told you this crackdown was coming on utvs and atvs um and i've got a couple other local news items i want to hit on as well talk with jeff at icloud.com always love hearing from you uh the blind brothers have been providing blind shutters and shades for people throughout northern and central arizona for a long time. Um, in Flagstaff, we got new blinds from them. Excellent. Awesome blinds. Uh, why don't you give them a call? It can help with your, your heating, your cooling, privacy, things like that. And also, um, just updating your blinds so you don't look like you're living back, um, 
I see there's a new Reagan movie, movie coming out. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Um, um, with Dennis Quaid? Dennis Quaid, yeah. yeah on, uh, like August 30th or something. But anyway, if your blinds look like you're, you're still in the Reagan administration, <laughs> you might want to give them a call. Look at all new blind shutters or shades. Mention the Jeff Orbit Show. You get half off installation. Really good deal there. 928-634-2423. That's 928-634-2423. Go to theblindbrothers.com. More to come. I want to do ATVs next, and we'll get into the initiatives. All right, so it's um, there's a new requirement. If I get there's been a lot of ATV issues and UTV issues in the state and mm-hmm. all over the country, quite frank, frankly. These things become much more prevalent. And those UTVs, which are those like side by side, you know, like think of yeah. they were used to be like a mini, smaller version of a Jeep, but now they're bigger than a Jeep. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like a cross between a, a typical four wheeler and a a Jeep type, yeah, but thing. covered usually like steering wheel, ground. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, like you roll see, cage, you see, and it's become like Mad Max, and mm-hmm. you know, they become quite large dune buggy type vehicles, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Um, fun stuff, you know, but the problem that's happened, and I've been pointing out for years, is watch out, they're going to regulate this stuff because there's a lot of people at. I don't even know if a lot of people is a fair word, but there are people that are totally out of control. Yeah, they're tearing through the forest. Idiots. And stuff. Yeah. You know, we've had experiences when we're out there on the forest service roads where, you know, we're like cutting firewood. So you got the kids. The dogs you out. The dog, yeah, yeah. And you're, you're loading a vehicle. You're pulled over and they come by 50, 50 yeah. miles you're an hour. You're on a dirt road. You yeah. don't expect someone flying down the road. Then what's the speed limit? 25 on those? Oh, probably. Yeah. I yeah. mean, come on. It's a dirt road, yeah. right? 50 miles an hour blare into music and it's like really what is this apocalypse yeah. now here yeah you know valkyrie or something you're, you're coming down the road you got you got to blare i know everybody wants to let loose have a good time uh-huh. but then there's other people yeah. <laughs> in the world right so you've the very small percentage that are abusing the use of atvs and mainly ohvs off-road i shouldn't even say off-road because they're you can't even drive off-road really anymore in arizona in the yeah, national forest right it's, well it's, you're not supposed I mean, to there's some places <laughs> like the cinder pits and you know yeah. other places uh, around the state that are designated you know ohv you know areas or whatever right um but but she start annoying people and you get more and more people in the state and people drop complaints and that's what's happened so Complaints have been, you know, lodged. So now towns and, and cities and the state, you know, they're all looking at how do we, how do we supervise this? How do we, yeah, because do we when there's a problem, this? we yeah. must regulate, we must make a law. So now I guess Camp Verde, as you know, we spend a lot of time in, in Camp Verde and we have a four wheeler. We love going out and, you know, doing that stuff, ATV and you, you name it. Um, they're considering regulating the use of ATVs. Get this one. This is interesting on private property. Mm. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're not even talking about government owned, which is the people or state land, state yeah. land or something like that. No, they're, they're considering actually regulating the use of ATVs on private property because here's what happened. <laughs> Apparently a neighbor brought a complaint against another, you know, their neighbor and another neighbor, their neighbor who built a small ATV course in their backyard and they didn't like that. And I don't yeah, know if they were using, probably ripping through on yeah, bikes pro- and probably, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't know all the situations. I mean, there's large parcels of land in Camp Verde where you might have, you know, two, four, acres. five, yeah. ten acres. And I think putting an ATV course in the middle of that is mm, probably not going to bother the neighbors mm-hmm. too much. Right. Um, it depends though. If you, sometimes you, the challenge can be the motorcycles. You get a motorcycle that's a, you know, that's, what that's I was doing saying, the that. dirt bikes and the dirt yeah, bike and they're loud. It's fun, but man, if you want to make your neighbor mad pretty quick, have your kid out there doing that for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. And I get it why a neighbor could be, could get upset. But oh, I would be, you know yeah, me. Yeah. I hear a dirt bike for five minutes and I'm annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, and she's like running them down. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. Um, she's jumping on the UTV and she's going 50 with the music blaring. Dun, 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 nah. dun, 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 dun. No, I, I could see why people could get upset, but I, I would also hope that people would hopefully communicate with their neighbor and try to resolve it. I always, always hope people will try to resolve the things amicably between themselves privately before going before involving the government. The chain. Yeah. Cause yeah. you involve the government's like involving, you know, uh, mom and well, dad. Maybe they, did. So maybe they did. I don't know all the details. Right. So anyway, it was sent to community development and the community development people, you know, they're your inspectors, your code enforcement people, et cetera, et cetera. They said, hey, this is not an allowed use. You have to stop with the, the dirt bike track or the ATV track on your private property. Don't know if the private property was one of those quarter acre, you know, 
nine or mm-hmm. nine thousand square foot lots or something, or right? Yeah, I mean, could have been really small. But not it probably sure. violates a noise ordinance or something. S- they something. could okay. get so them on the board of adjustment. Which, if if um, in city government, town government, there's you know different committees and stuff that can decide on things and planning and zoning this and that and and. If a decision's made and you don't like it, you can appeal it usually to what's called a board of adjustment. And those are um, citizens, your fellow, um, um, your neighbors and stuff, Mm -hmm. your community members. That's the word I'm looking for. Who sit on that, get appointed, and they make a a decision. The board of adjustment reversed it. Mm -hmm. So they said, yes, you can have your, your ATV course, right? So now community development is working on uh, updating its rules. This is for Camp Verde again in for September, in September. Mm-hmm. They're having they're having meetings right now to regulate potentially, haven't decided yet, the use of ATVs, UTVs, things like that on private property. Can they do rules. that? I guess they, they can. I, I don't know I don't what the know. legal, what the law, government, lawyers government, are telling them. Government but. can almost do whatever they want until somebody challenges them and spends a bunch of money, you know, legally. Yeah. Um, because I'm assuming that the board of adjustment said, hey, this is a private property. They can do what they want. Or that was the reason Or there's behind. no rule in place. I mean, yeah. there are tons of zoning rules that regulate and can dictate what you can and can't do on your private property. Now, sometimes they could run afoul of Prop, um, is it 206 or whatever, the one that government can't make a zoning yeah. regulation that negatively impacts your your, your property. Um, would this be the case on this? Probably, Probably not. not. Um, but it's up to people to kind of like, okay, I, I'm... I'm okay with some, you know, like, okay, you can't, you would dirt bike track. You can't use it after five or it's got, there's a certain noise limit, things like that. I, or I, a certain lot size. Yeah. But that, if you've got yeah. 10 acres, come on, you yeah. know, things that this is w- the slippery slope and being from Flagstaff and living here for so long. And the reason why we have a place in Camp Verde and that I spend so much time down there is because it's a different community feel. It's a different, there's things you can do down there that you quite frankly can't do up here, you know, mm-hmm. and people want that, mm-hmm. you know, people, people, you, you don't want, let, let me put it another way. You don't want to become Flagstaff for Sedona, quite mm-hmm. frankly, and, and have so many rules and regulations mm-hmm. that you're just, you're just yeah. stifled. So be careful, you know, be, be careful down there in Camp Verde on this one. They're also looking at RVs on private property, you know, and, and, and campers, uh-huh. I would assume. Yeah. Which again, is going to be a sore spot and animals. I, I don't know about what they're opening up with animals, but Camp Verde, a lot of animals, yeah, chickens, it, goats, cows. Yeah, it's zoned for there's cows you know, right livestock. across from the library. Yeah, <laughs> there's, a, yeah. There's, a, there's cows out there. Yeah, in but the that's field. probably zoned for some sort of livestock. Yeah, or but I don't have a problem if someone has proper sized lot. I yeah. don't care if someone has a cow or you know. You, yeah. We hear that donkey all the time. Yeah, right. That thing, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like a mile away <laughs> every night when the sun's yeah. going down. I like it. I'm like that's cool. <laughs> I don't even actually mind roosters. Yeah. You know, some people get really annoyed. Maybe if you're living right next to them, but they're off in the distance well, they're, for us. Yeah, they're, yeah. We have larger lot sizes, though, where, where we're at. Anyway, um, so the ordinance will be released for a month for people to read it once they start doing this and have ample time to comment on it. And the town manager pointed out, quote, stay tuned. There's a lot happening in planning and zoning. <laughs> That's from the Camp Verde Bugle. Look, he's right, the town manager. Stay tuned. When planning, when there's a lot happening in planning and zoning, stay tuned, yeah. <laughs> pay attention. Yeah. Cause I've seen it, it can go, it can go south on you. Cause if you don't, stay they tuned, will, Camp Verde. They'll Make, crack down if no one yeah. has any pushback yeah. and then people well, say, what, what well, happened? We had a community meeting and everybody that showed up agreed and thought it was a good idea. And you find out two people yeah, showed up. Two That's two how people. they, that's it. like, yeah. I don't know. I, I try, I don't stay. Or there's four and, get, and three yeah. of them like it. And they're yeah. like the majority of people. The majority of people stay tuned. Anytime you hear in your communities, I don't care where it is. And you've got anybody who's in the government saying, stay tuned, pay attention, pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's really important. All right. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, Angela switched us over to all st- Eric Boatner, Allstate Insurance Agency. We've been very happy. Great customer service. They usually respond to you really quick mm-hmm. or you get them right away when you call them up, right? Yes. Um, they have saved us money on our homeowners and auto policies. I do have a question for them though. And uh, Mark Howitt and I were talking about this uh, off off air yesterday. I forgot to bring it up. It, if I don't understand, and this is a general insurance thing all around. If you have multiple vehicles and you just have liability coverage, you don't have col- you know collision and comp mm-hmm. because the vehicles are older, and we have a lot of old older, older vehicles. But there's two of us, mm-hmm. me and Angela, and we drive right. 
And if we have four vehicles, why do we have to pay really anything more for liability on multiple vehicles? Shouldn't it be the person? I can't yeah. drive two vehicles at once. Yeah. Or yeah. if I had a hundred vehicles, I can only drive one at a time. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand that. You know, I, I get maybe some kind of fee for doing it, but they should insure the person. Right. Right. Yeah. And I thought they didn't. But anyway. That if you hit someone, no Come matter on. what car it's in. Yeah. I'm. It's. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter if I'm yeah. driving the old Jeep or the. Or the Mini Cooper. Actually, the Mini Cooper should, should be less because that, that thing weighs like eight pounds. <laughs> <laughs> what damage can it cause? I mean, anyway, you call Eric Boatner on that. Yeah. I'm just curious if he can change that. Anyway, Eric Boatner, Allstate Agency. Um, they can, I think they can, I'm confident they can save you money. At least try it out. Give them a call, 928-774-8722. That's 928-774-8722. All right, more to come. Hang tight. Flagstaff made a made a list, I guess. Yeah, that's a good thing, though. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm starting to hate these lists because yeah. um, we've grown a lot in this state, right? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I don't. What was the population when you were a kid? Do you even remember? No. I mean, I Tucson. No idea. Tucson was well under five hundred thousand. Oh right? yeah, I mean, probably. It's over a million now. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. a few hundred thousand people there, and it's good. I mean, growth is good, but growth can also you get to a point where you're like. It starts seeping out of Maricopa into cracks and it starts pushing into every community and mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I think I'm good. Yeah. You know, try to fix California now. You know, people yeah. that are there, maybe, maybe hang out there and try, yeah, to, try to make that better. Communities like this that heavily rely on tourism. All right. I don't know. It's, it's But then sometimes you, okay, I'm talking about lists that come out that are like some national, excuse me, magazine or publication. Mm-hmm. If, do we have magazines anymore? Yeah. There's a few left. Printed ones, right? And they say that Fossil Creek was a perfect example. Yeah. Well, this place is awesome. Then it's all of a sudden you got to get a permit. Well, that's to go to social Fossil media Creek. too. Social media, yeah. it's the YouTube. Everybody's making a video of, of this and that. Um, mm-hmm. But now another place has come. Uh, another who is the CNN? Yeah, the article is on CNN. CNN I don't Travel know or something. Okay, the, I don't know who did the study. Well, what do we got? Well, Flagstaff is number six on the list of best towns to visit in 2024. America's best towns. Best town. I I, I don't I, know what. I yeah. mean, usually it's that's like, like under city. seventy, that five thousand yeah. or under hundred thousand, maybe. I think of town. I think of Jerome, or Camp Verde. But okay, we'll we'll yeah. go with it. Well, and Flagstaff is actually a city. Okay, I mean, this one's kind of funny though because it's like. <laughs> It's like we're coming into our own or something. Well, yeah, right? it's kind of like, well, Flagstaff used to just be a stop on, on Route 66 on the way to California. When, in 1942? Like, you know, we used <laughs> to just, we just kind of stop over real quick and get something to eat on the way to the Grand Canyon. Mm. But now, but now it's different. And all the, you know, the, the <laughs> lumberjacks and the cowboys aren't downtown anymore. Well, it's the, all. Those, yeah. Once we forced the rednecks out. Yeah. When? Now we have a hip downtown. Oh, now and, it's hip. Yeah. When did this happen? When did the cowboys and lumberjacks get pushed out? Was this like um, just a couple years ago or was this back in 1923? Yeah. I mean, I when they, I've been here a long time. I, I can remember different. I remember downtown when there's dirt lots. Yeah, I you know. know. And, I mean, they have run down sidewalks. They have improved the downtown area no, they, significantly they have, since the nineties. Yes, is, is but yeah. um, one of the people that they interviewed has a restaurant. You know, like yeah. an NAU graduate and re- restaurant okay, or two so downtown. Been here for you know f- five five days, but it, right. I, no, thanks for your business. And the quote cool. was fine. something I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like. Um, <laughs> In the last 10 years, it's really, you know. We have different food options. Like, yeah, it's it's become fine dining yeah, and yeah. stuff. Something like that. And I'm thinking. What? Like, I've been here 30 years now. And yeah. that's just not true. Yeah. It's, they, 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 they just got off the any But I don't know how long this person's lived I, there. I don't know here. either. But there's so many people in our communities. And welcome. I, I'm not bashing you. Don't, just don't get me wrong. It's just. But, but, but sometimes you got to look at the longer perspective that other people have. And yeah. we're like, come on. Yeah. So, so like what downtown Flagstaff has got fine dining. Now we got oh. rid of like the chuck wagon uh, or the, the, quote the, was, the beans. It, the, 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 the dining was very, this is the quote, very steak and potatoes no, about 10 no, years ago. No, 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 no. There's, there was, uh, there was Thai places. <laughs> yeah. There's Greek, there's Italian places. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's like a pita place downtown. 
Longer than 10 years. Uh, that one place in the house down there, that kind of fancy place that yeah, people like used to the, go to. And, mm-hmm, you know, yeah, scale. that's where all the, the, no, just no, you're wrong. It's been longer than 10 and years. And honestly, uh, uh, there wasn't any steak steakhouse place down there. I, I don't think there was any steak yeah. place. You know, there's places like the Weatherford been there forever and all these places. It's like, no, just because you're here and all of a sudden there's some new restaurants doesn't mean or there weren't you restaurants open anymore. A Come different on. Different style restaurant. Yeah, these, it's, I, I think we got to get away from that short term. You know, yeah, I've been here. Oh, I've seen so many changes in three years. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, come on. And yeah. I don't want to be the, oh, I've been here longer than you guy. Right. Because there's people that have been here for, you know, 50, 60, longer 70 years that right. are listening. Yeah. And they're like, I remember when there was one bar downtown, yeah. you know, and that's they're probably right. Yeah. But it, it's it, it's changed a long time ago. And yeah, I guess at some point they got rid of the, the lumberjacks and the and the, the and cowboys. the cowboys and stuff. And they brought in the, the leftists from California, yeah. quite frankly. Uh, all right. I love CNN. Did they blame it on climate change? <laughs> uh, I mean, probably. There's no more stakes because, kind of, of, a long because of climate change. Yeah. You can't have a potato anymore. Um, when we come back, I want to hit on the um, the initiatives in Arizona. I got a lot of those to go over. Uh, and, oh, I got some of your comments as well. If you've left a comment recently, I got a couple of those. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Back in a few. This portion of the show is brought to you by American Trailer AZ.com. This is the Jeff Orvid Show. All right, welcome back. Happy to be here with you. Uh, Angela's here with me as well. Love your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Well, let's see here. Okay, so you've got, we've got potentially as a state, as the state of Arizona, as the voters that are going to go out there and hopefully be informed on pages and pages and pages of legalese. (laughs) You're all going to be mini legislators now, right? Yeah, because we have the initiative process in Arizona where the state legislature or citizens groups, whatever that may be, it could be, you know, some dude on the side of the road with the end is near sign all the way up to an organized out of state effort backed with millions and millions and millions of dollars go out and get signatures uh, to get whatever they want on the ballot. Well, in Arizona, we've got 11 initiatives right now that have proposition numbers that have gone through, you know, I guess the verification process to see if they got enough signatures, which they randomly select some. And there's a time allotment that people have in which they can, you know, challenge legally, take, take it to court, the initiative and actually challenge, um, you know, hey, you don't got enough signatures. Or they can also take this stuff to court, bless you. They can also take take this stuff to court for, um, you know, constitutional issues or it was a deceptive wording on the ballot, uh, the um, uh, initiative, mm-hmm. the, the, the clipboard that comes around, right? Right, right. And they have petition. time to- Petition, thank you. Jeez. And they, can, they have time to do that, right? There's three of them that are still in court right now. Um, 11 have cleared. They have, like I said, prop numbers. I want to go over kind of 30,000 foot real quick. The 11 that you're going to be seeing on your ballots and real quick, the three that are in court that are going to make it through is very hard to knock these out unless it's a clear flagrant, um, signature gatherer scam or something mm-hmm. where they found out that this gatherer, this paid gatherer was not legit, not registered with secretary of state. Pretty hard to knock these off when people legitimately put them in. These are organized groups. It's yeah. not the end. They is near, doing, it's not the so, end is near yeah. guy in the corner yeah. generally yeah. doing this. They, they know what they're doing. So let's sit on that. Um, and I got a couple of comments as well. Why don't we start with the comments? Because if I don't, yeah, then you won't do it. Yeah, you you know what happens. Um, then I won't do it. And I, I absolutely hope I have the comment here because um, Ted had called in and um, I don't have the comment. Is uh, Angela, how could that happen? But I will get the comment here for you because <laughs> Ted called in. I, you know, I've been commenting recently on, um, we, we did some, a big issue that's going on with the election is actually the, um, the social issues and the, you know, the, the, how, how this, our society quite frankly is changing when it comes to social issues. And, um, you know, people are frustrated. And I think that's a huge thing, uh, in this election coming up is how our society is changing and how, you, you know, we're being called weird now. And yeah. several of you have commented on that. I'll they get it. They flip the script. Yeah. They flip, they, they do. Yeah. They, you know, they have a good, um, they actually are, are good at act, are bringing forward what they actually are 
um, by commenting on us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if, if they're saying that we're weird, you know, then I think it's actually, they acknowledge that what they're doing is, is weird. Yeah. Does it I make guess sense? In a way. You know, yeah, yeah. It's like, Hey, if they're saying you're weird, then they are probably weird. Yeah. Is, is, right. is, is what I think. So anyway, here it is. I got it now. Yep. I thought I had it. Nope. Don't have it. Okay. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got to tell you. All right. Talk well, with I've been Jeff. saying all along that, that they were going to pull a bait and switch on, yeah. on Biden. Yeah. And, and you're right. Oh yeah, that's yeah, exactly you're what right. they did. You actually predict things pretty good. I predicted that it would be the Pennsylvania vice presidential pick. Mm-hmm. It was going to be Shapiro on Monday show. I said, oh, th- absolutely. This is the smart choice for yeah, Harris. Yeah, I heard that. Right? Uh-huh. Totally wrong. Yeah. And I was caveat saying I'm usually wrong on this stuff. Well, but, they um, kind of, I mean. I don't I think that, you think it was because because he's Jewish? I mean, I don't uh, know. I mean, that could heart, be, but, but I think it just threw people off because she was holding her rally in Pennsylvania. And so people just were like assuming that it would be him. And I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but. Yeah, they were holding that rally. That's what I kind of thought too. It's like, oh, you're, yeah. you're holding the rally there. So it's got to be, you know, it, it's it's got to be the case that it's, you know, you're going to pick the person actually where you're holding the rally. That would make sense. Yeah. You know, to me right. anyway. Um, yeah. So when you see them calling us weird, it's because they know that they're weird. <laughs> I think are we past this calling each other weird thing. Well, I hope as an so. Ele- as a I campaign, just feel like that's you know? kind of yeah. childish, but like, yeah, I do see, feel sometimes like, you know, they do weird stuff and it's really imposing yeah. on other people's values and stuff that what they do. But then, yeah, them call, turn around and calling us weird for what? I'm not sure. Well, weird the, for not thinking that that's okay, I guess. Well, they're still on this kick on like Drudge Report, which turned to total leftist hell uh-huh. at this point. Um, used to be a conservative leaning uh, news aggregator, yeah. right? The weird thing that they really focus on right now is that JD Vance may have wore guy liner. You know the, the oh the, the eyeliner, little, yeah, like like oh. like think nineteen eighties, you know, hairband stuff, yeah. And they, you know, they've got the photographic evidence and I'm like, really? Aren't you the people that like, there's literally dudes going in boxing in the Olympics and punching girls. Or we're not sure if the, dude, the person claims to be a girl, but that's. Yeah, that's I was reading nowadays. something that, yeah. that said that, that the, the one with the Italian boxer and the Algerian, I think. Yeah. That she, she's. What well, is a girl, but I suspect transitioning that there, dude? I just suspect that <laughs> if, she didn't, if she didn't pass the gender yeah, what's going qualification on yeah. test or whatever that is, then that must mean that she's taking possibly some kind of testosterone and possibly do, maybe so, we don't know. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, anyway, look, the, the reality is if they're saying you're weird and it's like, yeah, we're, we're weird. We're the ones that like, aren't okay with a girl going into, I'm sorry, a guy going into our you know, underage girls locker room Mm -hmm. to change. Right. Yeah. And walking around in all of his glory. Right. I mean, we're weird, you know, we're weird when we are concerned that they have the the underage drag story time stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, yeah, we're weird, you know, but no, JD Vance may have wore guy liner. Maybe, maybe not. Here's the yeah. video that maybe was doctored. But aren't they okay not. with that if he did? Oh, it's like uh, they should be celebrating that, right? <sighs> it's a weird world, I'll tell you <laughs> what. Hey, if I was selling a home right now in the Flagstaff area, I'm trying to relocate to a... Well, Flagstaff's pretty cool, but just to say you wanted to go to the totally unweird place, wherever that may be. Is I'd there come, one? I don't think so anymore. <laughs> thousand acres with a fence, <laughs> tall one. Um and, and probably in a place like Wyoming that has um, no building department and nobody's showing up with a clipboard, right? <laughs> yeah. You got to endure the cold winter, but might be worth it. Build a big house. A warm house. Build a big warm a house. A warm barn. A warm <laughs> barn. I mean, what does it really matter anymore when you can stream anything you want? We they can have plenty Am- of electricity y- to charge whatever we yeah, want. Yeah. Yes. Amazon or wherever you get your deliveries from may be quicker here and it may take eight days in the middle of Wyoming, but you just a little more planning, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, if you want to sell your home in the Flagstaff area, Kelly Broadus is the only person that I would call. She does such a great job. So many people have used her um, and I, you're, I would use her and I have been a real estate agent. I've had my real estate license. Don't anymore. Um, we've been in real estate for couple years. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. A couple um, times. Yeah. 10, I, I would classify 20. myself as not an expert in many things, but I would in real estate. And um, I would use Kelly. So that, that says a lot right there. And Kelly has over 200 five-star reviews on Zillow. Give her a call right now. 888-446-5602. 
888-446-5602 or go online. You can get instant valuation on your home and learn more about Kelly. You don't even have to talk to an agent. Northern Arizona fine homes.com. That's Northern Arizona fine homes.com. Okay. 11 initiatives here. Whew. Did you not find the comment? No, it's gone. Okay. It's gone, but no, actually I do have a comment here from, um, from Catherine. Oh. Um, you wondered how the VP would respond to, Dude, quote, dudes, I must have said dudes in women's sports at some point. Look at the Title IX requirements that went into effect today. She emailed this a couple of days ago. They supposedly grant female rights to, quote, unquote, dudes who say they are female. I can't read the whole thing now because my phone doesn't have the capacity, but this is brought to you by Biden Harris. Catherine, you're incorrect. Just say it's Harris Biden. I don't know what happened to Biden. No, Biden's think, gone. Yeah. He's gone. He's, she's essentially. Any, there hasn't been anything on Biden for a while. She is the president of the United States right now. She is. He's gone. He's, the the, he's, he's like out in the yeah. corner playing marbles with, with the lack of yeah. marbles. And she's the de facto president. Has never received a vote. Didn't failed trying to run for president years ago. But somehow it's hers to lose right now. Yeah. That's what they say. She's they never got a vote. Yeah. She hasn't held a press conference or talked to anyone in whatever, 16, 17 days, however long she's been in this since the coup and um, didn't receive a single vote. All those Democrats have wasted their time. And in Arizona, well, I don't think you can pull the independent and the Democrat on the presidential primary in Arizona. No, I don't That's think so. It's just for the gen, um, other elections. But anyway, all those people, all you Democrats have voted for, for Biden because- Apparently, he's so competent and so ready to be president for four more years with Harris sitting by him for all those years watching his decline. She didn't say anything. It wasn't a concern until after uh, or, or until we get close to the um, convention, which mm-hmm. she didn't want to participate in. Apparently, she just wanted to be, whew, you are now it. Yeah. By the right. powers that be. She don't have to. Democrats should not <laughs> vote just to say to the Democrat Party, no, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't do this crap again because they'll never let you vote again. You'll never have a say. You'll just be presented. Here's your choice. One yeah. choice. Yeah. And in right. this case, it was Harris. Right. So anyway. Well, anyway, what Catherine was talking yeah, about, Catherine, though. Yeah, Catherine. Sorry, I went on a little. Th- that, is, that is the problem, is that they have made it okay to just say, I am a female, or yeah. I am a male, or I am a cat, or whatever the crazy stuff they come up with, and... I just say I am, and therefore I am. I'm my true self. And they've gotten themselves into a corner now because yeah. there's issues, especially with the sports. Yep. And they really can't back off of that, but they probably in in their heart know that it's jacked you know, up. This is not this is not right. No, they probably in their heart they'll never admit it, but yeah. they probably know that okay, yeah, maybe maybe there's. Some of, issue. Yeah, some of them, two thirds of them, a third some of them are, of them are lost up. beyond those. That's what I was telling you last hour. Don't waste your time arguing with those people. Yeah. If you're trying to win this and, and, and save the country, don't waste your time arguing with people that think it's okay for somebody to be proclaimed they're a cat or for a dude to walk around in your underage daughter's locker room naked that no, oh, yeah, they just express in there to yourself. They were born that way. Okay. Go be born that way somewhere okay. else. Well, right. There's a, there's gotta so be two thirds of, okay. of them that, yes, that we, we don't admit. know. We don't yeah. know what the number is, but there has got to be a lot of Democrats out there that look at the stuff that's going on culturally and say to themselves, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> right. In their and heart. This shouldn't be. Yeah. So but don't we've, we've let them do it already and, and we yeah. can't go back yeah. on that. Yeah. So don't be like this goober down in, in Mesa. Is Mayor John Giles, who was talking about last hour, who has now been invited to the Democrat convention. He's a supposed re- lifelong Republican, you know, who supports, who supported Kelly in 22, who supports Harris, you know, right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. Who, who, who is a, a, a rhino, Republican name only. He's a, he's a Democrat and they're pretending, I guess, I guess it fits, you know, you can just say, yeah, I, I am a Republican, even though you're really a Democrat. You just proclaim what you yeah. are nowadays. No, 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 no. I am. I am. Yeah. I'm all for um, uh, Governor Waltz of Minnesota, who nobody heard of until you know three minutes ago, who let his cities burn down during the summer of love in 2020. Mm-hmm. Right? Who mm-hmm. was? Um, oh, he's the dude that it's okay to put tampons in the in the in the boys' locker room mm-hmm. because boys need tampons. Yeah. Why would a boy need a tampon? Well, because. Why would a boy need a tampon? Because there's a girl in there. 
Well, right. Right? Yeah. Who's, who's pretending who to be says, a girl? Oh, oh, well, boy. I'm a boy. Yeah. 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 So this is the guy. This is who you get. Yeah. This is this is all weird. They they're saying we're weird. This is weird stuff, man. Yeah. Wasn't that um who was that? Weird wild stuff. Wasn't <laughs> that from Johnny Carson or something? Yeah, I think there, it there's was somebody he's uh, yeah. a McMahon. Uh, the, the guy who did know. the sweepstakes, right? Some of you know who I'm talking about. Some of you are like, I don't even know who Johnny Carson is. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch those old, uh, you know, TV channels that they now stream, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. on Amazon Prime or something. TV and they have an old, something. I was watching The Price is Right with Bob Barker the other day. And it had to have been from like 1979. <laughs> and they're like, um, totally different world. And this is what they brought out. They said, um, you have to come up with the price. It's The Price yeah. is Right, right? Um, and, and they brought out this. Um, give me the price of this oriental rug. And you know, you're like, nobody uses that yeah. word anymore. Right. Yeah. And it was like $400 or something. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a girl from Iran there. I was like, uh -huh. yeah, it must've been 1979. Anyway, yeah. I digress. <sighs> Weird, wild stuff. I'll tell you what. All right. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Thank you for that comment. Catherine, mm -hmm. appreciate that. Ted, I'm going to try to find your comment. Whew, I went into the pile of weird and disappeared talk with jeff at icloud.com let's talk with jeff at icloud.com get the comments in and we'll we'll throw them on that 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 pile that i never seem to get to i will get to it i shouldn't say that um thank you to rob wilson of timberline firearms and training that was really yeah, fun i heard uh, it was Monday. a good time i saw the videos yes, and yes yeah sorry i didn't bring you i didn't even invite you that was sad that's okay yeah no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Your I don't, shoulder. I don't really care. My shoulder still hurts. Um, uh, Timberlands. I'm sure I would have liked it if I had gone, but I, you know, you know, it's yeah, okay. It's, I don't. Okay. It really doesn't it's bother okay. me that you went and that, that we shot the 50 cal and that we, you know, none of the other wives automatic. were there, so it yeah. really doesn't bother me. Shot, shot the um, automatic firearms and all uh -huh. that, and I mean, yeah, you you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do that. We love doing it. Yeah. Camp Savage. He has, Timberline has the indoor shooting range out at Timberline Firearms and Training, but they also have Camp Savage which you, you know, call them up 928-526-7900. That's a longer range stuff. Um, so you can see how bad of a marksman you actually are. <laughs> Except for or, our daughter who apparently she won. should be a sniper. Yeah, she won. She, <laughs> boom, we had the, the Tannerite stuff. Yeah. And, you know, whoever got that got a mug. We need that mug, Rob. I think he still has it. We oh, I asked her up. if she won anything, yeah, like she a, a mug. shirt or a hat. She had like a Tannerite mug or whatever that stuff's really? called. Really? I was going to call it Thermite, but no, it's the wrong word. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, no, she won. So go ahead, look, uh, support a great company, Timberline Firearms and Training, um, indoor shooting range, training opportunities, firearms. I'm actually waiting for a Ruger uh, 6.5 Creedmoor for Owen for his first deer hunt coming up in October, um, shortly after duck hunting. And then ballot mail drops coming out too. October's yeah. going to be a busy month. And then we're going deer hunting. I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in, but we'll make it work. Um, they can do those firearms. He ordered that from Ruger right here in Prescott. Mm -hmm. You know, make all nice. those firearms right there. So Timberline Firearms and Training, 928-526-7900. If you want to book a course, they go pretty quick. 928-526-7900. Hang tight. Back in a minute. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. Huge selection of trailers out at American Trailer Company. Um, Veteran-owned company. No city sales tax. That saves you, I don't know, what is that, 2 point something percent mm -hmm. right there? Something yeah. like that. Um, American Trailer Company, where I bought my dump trailer recently. Uh, if you are really anywhere you're listening to this, you can get a trailer from them, and you'll save money versus going to Phoenix, for example, most of the time. Uh, on their in-stock items, their trailers that are in their huge yard out there with tons of options at American Trailer Company, uh, you got a couple options. If you mention a Jeff Orvitz show, that's 5% off, 5% off, which is significant on some of these yeah. pricier yeah, trailers. I mean, up. you're getting a dump trailer, that can add up. Or if you're in, for example, Verde Valley, Prescott area, up to 150 mile radius from there, you go map it out, you'll find it. Or meet them at the corner store if it's a little close, right? 150 mile radius. If you mention a Jeff Orchard, you get free delivery. That's a long way. That's I mean, a long that's way. Like Phoenix. I mean, think how far that is. Yeah. Don't tell them. They, they might be like, is it that far? I don't know if I want to go that far. Yeah, <laughs> no, but they'll deliver it. Um, you get either that. the 5% off or the, um, the free delivery. So go mm -hmm. ahead and go ahead and um, go to American trailer, AZ.com. That's American trailer, AZ.com. Tell them I sent you and check out their great inventory. Again, American, American trailer.com. This is the Jeff Orbit show. Did we talk about the initiatives yet? No. <laughs> That's what uh, we were supposed to do. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Okay. Proposition. We're going to start going through these. This is going to be like 30,000 foot view. And then um, 
we'll hit on this more and bring in experts and pro people, uh, people who oppose things like that. Uh, Proposition 133, it requires partisan primary elections for partisan offices. I don't know. Do we want to do that? This was something that, uh, did the legislature send this? I'm not sure. Um, Yes Vote supports this constitutional amendment to require partisan primary elections for partisan offices, prohibits primary elections where all candidates, regardless of political party affiliation, run in the same primary elections, such as top two, two, top four, top five primaries, provide that the state's direct primary election law supersedes local charters and ordinances that are inconsistent with the law. So, I don't know. We're going to bring somebody in and talk yeah. about this more because I'm not, I'm, this isn't the top, this isn't the, the jungle primary thing. No, this is, this is doing straight up party elections for everything. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, mm. I'm not really opposed to that. I think the parties should pick their candidate and not people from the other party. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, it's right now it's Tucson has um, partisan elections. Yeah. They're pretty jacked up. Down. You got to be a Democrat to win down there. Yeah. 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 Proposition 134, create a signature distribution requirement for citizen initi- initiated ballot measures based on state legislative districts. Um, so you've got it. It requires that signatures from 10% of the voters cast for, for governor. They base everything on how many votes the governor got. So 10%, that would be the number you'd hit in each legislative district to qualify initiated uh, state statutes for the ballot. So, Instead so of it just being a statewide thing. they can't get all signatures in yes. Phoenix. They have to go to they all have the to counties. to go to all the different counties and get yeah. signatures. And it goes to what this was, I think, something the legislature put forward. It goes to what I was talking about last hour, kind of my, I don't know, suggestion to like the Trump campaign and the Lake campaign as far as you got to get into the, the forgotten the about more communities. More remote counties. Yeah, let's, yeah. Call it, let's call it what it is. Flyover country for Arizona. Yeah. Right? Fly over country yeah. in the Midwest for the U.S., but they, all, all of you who are outside, Mar- all of us who are outside Maricopa County, we've forgotten about, right? Mm-hmm. So this would make, hey, you got to get out and actually see if you can get signatures in these other yeah, areas. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and then it, it's a 15% threshold um, if it's a constitutional amendment, so okay. e- even higher. So, okay, on its surface sounds reasonable, but yeah. let's dig deeper, see if we can find um, the poison pill. Perhaps there is one. Uh, Prop 135. Provide for the legislature to terminate a state of emergency uh, or alter the emergency powers of government during state of emergency with, within 30 days. This is a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Senator Michelle Eugenie Rita tried to get this passed yeah. when she was when in Ducey there. Was we, yes. Du- Ducey did like the two and a half year, for like years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the two and a half year state of emergency. Yeah. This all goes back to COVID and these yeah. insane politicians that, and Waltz, what's his first name? Tim, Tom, Frank. I don't know. What's this guy's name again? I don't know. What's this guy's name? Um, oh. Wow. Okay. So we got a, we do have a dog in the studio. That was loud. Someone just <laughs> poked in. Um, why can't I remember this guy? Waltz. Yeah. Waltz. Tim Waltz. Anyway, he was a tyrant, right? Yeah. And he did these states of emergency. So Ducey, Republican governor, did the state of emergency. Go lay down, dog. And they shouldn't be able to do it for more than 30 days. Yeah. This should be capped. I mean, yeah. state of emergency is your mayor has to declare it because there's been a train wreck and there's uh, some kind of nasty, dangerous, Hazardous toxic material. gas leaking all over the place. Yeah. Um, so absolutely on that one. Okay, we've got time for one more. We'll come back. We'll hit the other. We did three. Uh, we'll hit the other. How, what, what do we got? 11. We got, we got nine more. 10 more. Nine more. There's 14, actually. So 11 more. All right. Hang tight. Uh, We'll be back in a minute. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at Um, iCloud.com. It's a good time to call Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management. The dog really distracted me. (laughs) People are like shooken by the bark. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good time to call Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management. Um, The market, Monday dumped like a thousand. That's the Dow. I mean, there's so many different markets. Um, Then it went up yesterday. Then it went up again today. I don't know where it's at right now. I didn't check, you know, for a while here. Um, That's what it does. Um, Sometimes it helps to have someone maybe a little more cool and collected to say, okay, 
the world's not ending today. I hope he would tell us when the world is ending <laughs> so we can sell like the day before that. Although what, what would it matter, right? Yeah. The financial <laughs> world ending, right? right. Um, Glenn Least, they will sit down with you, review your portfolio. When's the last time you did that, right? When's the last time you went over your portfolio and, um, and, and actually talked to someone? Have you ever done a woke mitigation portfolio review? I mean, there's, there's things like that that Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management can help out with. 928-225-2474. Call them up. You can get a free consultation. Nine, that's what we did initially. Uh, 928-225-2474. That's Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management at 928-225-2474. Back in a minute. All right, welcome back. I got it figured out. Good. My system was trying to suppress Ted's freedom of speech. I don't know <laughs> what it was. It didn't like the monophile. Yeah. And it only likes stereo files, I guess. But I have a comment here from Ted. I don't throw out the number very much. Um, many of you have been listening for years. Um, know the number, 877-9713-971, 877-9713-971, if you want to leave a comment anytime, or also talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, but yeah, we've been talking a lot about the Olympics and stuff and what's going on. And Mark mentioned, I think yesterday, about the um, rainbow flag. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw actually, uh, um, there was a nice rainbow at our house the other day. Your, your um, grandma was here, your mom was here. Uh -huh. And uh, she went out there and she's like, oh, that's beautiful and stuff. And oh, we can never look at the rainbow again, the same again. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you know? it so, kind of ruins the, the yeah. real deal because it makes you think of yeah. other stuff. Because yeah. it was like 10 years ago, not even. I never seen someone acquire a symbol as quick as LGBTQ plus, you know, 9821742. Eight, um, you know, that group, um, which is fine. I guess you, you want a symbol, and so, but it was the rainbow. And now it's like, if you just put a rainbow, cause you like rainbows on like mm -hmm. your car, um, yeah. I, you know, you right. just like, it's, it's all of a sudden that's the symbol yeah. for that movement right. instead of, Hey, I just really like rainbows. Anyway, here's yeah. what Ted had to yes, say. When I see people with the rainbow flag, I always say, Oh, do you know that that's a cup? The rainbow is a covenant between God and man. They won't flood the earth again. Thanks Ted. Appreciate that. Um, I, I didn't remember that, and we had to look up. Yeah, it's um, in, 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 well, it's obviously, in yeah, the, the Noah, the story of Noah yeah. is in the book of Genesis. Yes. Yeah. And it was, um, the, the reference to the rainbow is after, when when that came out, then it was time to get off the ark. Right, they found Correct. dry land. and yeah. Found dry land, and that it was the promise that never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Yeah. Genesis 9, 8, um, 11. Yeah, thanks I, for that. I do want to point out real quick, though, Please. that the rainbow flag that people fly as a symbol is not the same as an actual rainbow. There's six stripes in the flag, and a real rainbow has seven colors. Roy G. Biv. Correct. That's how I remember it. Red, green. No, Roy, R-O-Y. Red, orange, yellow, green, orange, blue, see, indigo, orange. violet. <laughs> but the flag is actually <laughs> six. So they're... I mean, what it's color a very did they, small difference. What color did they drop? One of the, either the uh, indigo or the violet. It's like they have the red, orange, yellow, oh, green, weird. blue, I wonder, I wonder and it's purple or something. Yeah. So, but a real rainbow is. has two, or like two shades of purple. Yeah, I wonder the history yeah. on that is. Why, why was, um, why was one color omitted, you know? Well, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe it was to, to distinguish between the real Rainbow. I don't, oh, I mean, I don't really okay. know. So we can, okay. So there you go. I can get a bumper sticker with the seven rainbow, Yeah. but nobody would know the difference. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, it's not like you go and count the, yeah. you know, number. And I don't there. care what you do. I just hate when things, some things get appropriate. You know, you yeah, just like, know. then it's like, I can't use that anymore. Come on. Right. Right. You know, or there's an assumption, you know, it's just like, oh, this person really likes rainbows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ted, thanks for that call. Thanks for being a long time listener as well. I really um, do appreciate that. 877-9713-971 if you want to leave a comment anytime. Okay. We're going over some of these propositions. I'm having Isabel, my, you know, my daughter who does all the scheduling and stuff. She's going to be working like crazy because come late August into September, that's when I'm going to have multiple candidates back on as we climb towards the uh, October 9th mail drop mm -hmm. date. So we're about two months away from voting actually starting. Yeah. Right. I mean, because mm -hmm. we all, most of us vote by mail now. Um, so we'll bring people in on these initiatives as well. But there's 11 initiatives that have been given proposition numbers that supposedly be on the ballot. There's three still um, in legal uh, limbo, limbo, shall we say. Uh, one of them actually cleared a hurdle. Judge rules that the Tipped Workers Protection Act 
is going to remain on the ballot. It's Proposition 138, also known as Tipped Workers Protection Act. I just said that. Will remain on the ballot for the November election. Um, it raises the wage. Um, wait, wait. That, this one is, there, there's two of them, right? There's the One Fair Wage Act and there's the Tipped Workers Protection Act. Okay, the tipped one, they can be paid 25%. Less per hour. Yes, you're as right. As long as the tips they get would equal what the minimum, minimum wage, wage is. would have been. That yep. was put forward. I believe the Restaurant Association pushed that and got that on the ballot. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other one is the One Fair Wage Act, which I'm not sure. Did that one clear the legal threshold yet? Um, one Fair Wage Act. Um, yeah, that one's still in legal limbo right now, the minimum wage and increase initiative. Um, so there's, I think, and, and I don't think a judge is going to throw any of these out. So right. I think you're going to see two wage issues. So one is saying, Hey, if you work for tipped wages, that's the tipped wage act, correct? Mm-hmm. You have a proposition number on that? 138. 138. If you can, as an employer, pay them less because they're going to make tips. And I think this is totally fair and legit. And that's what they've historically yeah, done I, until the last uh, like five, 10 well, years to date myself when I worked at a restaurant as, as a waiter, um, i it was four twenty five an hour, but I made two thirteen. Right. And I was just basically pay for the taxes for the tips that were claimed. Yeah. Um, and I claimed them all. Yeah. Cause I'm a good upstanding. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, the, um, the problem though, I mean, and I made at, more than minimum wage yeah. on my dad. At this point though, it would only be for new workers. Cause it's not like they're going to go and decrease the current tipped employees probably. Yeah, wage, no, no, right? yeah, that's probably fair enough. However, but it the, would the be for anyone new. Yeah, but high, the restaurant industry has a very high turnover, so correct, they would be able yeah. to get new yeah. people. And, yeah. I just, yeah, the, I don't think they'd go back and and decrease people's pay. Yeah. At least probably, maybe some people would. I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Angela would. She'd no, be like, I wouldn't. Sorry, <laughs> you're gonna make less. Well, there's now. some <laughs> out there that might do it, but I mean, you know. Um, Hopefully they wouldn't, but anyone new coming in. Okay. Um, <laughs> Proposition 135. No, we did that one. Proposition 136, provide for challenges to an initiative measure or constitutional amendment after the filing of the measure with the Secretary of State. I don't know what that means. Don't they already do that? Yeah, I guess a, a new process for that. Was that yeah. put forward by the legislature? So, yes, vote supports providing for challenges. Uh, the measure would amend the state constitution to introduce new provisions regarding the challenges. Um, we're going to have to dig deeper into that one. So many initiatives are coming out nowadays, so maybe that's to maybe slow that down a little bit. Uh, Prop 137, end term limits for state Supreme Court justices. This was by the legislature and superior court judges. It replaces them with terms of good behavior. So there's like a review board set up. So mm-hmm. instead of uh, I vote to retain Angela Orvitz as judge, whatever, it's, they would get rid of go, the whole retention thing. They're basically yeah. in there, I guess, forever until the review board says, oh, you really suck. Yeah, you haven't right? had good behavior. Yeah, you haven't had good be- behavior. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see about that one. It all depends on who's the review board and who decides the review board. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I have to be holder, right? We did Prop 136. Prop, uh, I'm sorry, 138, we did that. Prop 311. Establish a $20 fee on every conviction for a criminal offense, which would go to pay a benefit of $250,000 to the family of a first responder who is killed in the line of duty. So it's a fee on every criminal conviction. Eh. If it's going to go towards, I, I always get mixed on this stuff because it seems like with the amount that government taxes and the size of our government, and we've had this discussion with candidates during the election that we went from $9 billion state budget to $18 billion in 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. That you would think that this stuff should be taken care of already. It's kind of like- Yeah, there should be a fund probably yeah. for something like that, either in their union or um, I don't even mind the, the state, government. I don't even mind the state tax yeah. dollars going for that. But my point, I don't mind paying $20 if someone's convicted of a criminal offense or them paying $20, I should say. Um, because they were convicted of a criminal offense that goes to a family of a first responder who's killed in the line of duty. I absolutely don't mind that. But I always question, why aren't we doing that already? Yeah. Why isn't the money already there when they've bloated the size of government by double? Right. Their priorities are out of whack. But since government's so screwed up and they're probably never going to do that on their own, I don't have a problem with convicted criminals paying 20 extra bucks if that's going to help somebody who's um, fallen and killed in the line of duty. Mm Mm-hmm. 
but they should be doing that, right? I mean, yeah, I don't they, really know they should, they should what they do doing that. at this time. Yeah, if so anything, I guess yes. But out. why don't you just do this without even you know having to? That's what I'm saying. Another like, revenue it seems source. like they yeah. should have a fund through their union or through the state already. Prop 312. We've had on Goldwater Institute on this. I think Joe Setian, the communications yeah. director, was on recently. It allows property owners to apply for a property tax refund when you've got a crack alley behind your house. I don't think they worded it quite that way, but I do. It, it basically, homeless camps, crack alleys, uh, prostitution ring, you know, crap's going on on the public parcel next to you or the, um, the alley, alley or whatever. Or the sidewalk in some cases. Yeah, exactly. And you're, you're getting diminished properties. You're just costing you value, diminished property value. You're, you're having to pick up, you know, um, drug needles and stuff, and it's costing you money to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. So you go to your city and say, you guys are jacked up. You're not enforcing this. I get money back. On your property good taxes. Thing. I think it's a good thing. Uh -huh. Proposition 313, provide for life imprisonment for, for an individual who is convicted of sex trafficking of a child. Yeah, there's probably some life imprisonment things that should be put in place for, for, for multiple things mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. world. So, yeah, get convicted. There you go. I could probably think of worse punishments. Punishments. Yeah. 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 Allow proposition 314, allow for state and local police to arrest non-citizens who cross the border unlawfully. We've had on like Senator Wendy Rogers on this issue. Legislature put this forward. Uh, the Harris administration, which is firmly in control of this country right now because Biden is uh, off playing shuffleboard in the West Wing somewhere. They don't know where he went. He's gone. Um, they have allowed seven million illegals to invade our country. So as a state, we got to defend our state. And we got to allow law enforcement to do that and charge these people with criminal, I don't know, trespass or whatever the legalese is on this one. Proposition 314, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. And a class two felon, felony if they're selling fentanyl. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Throw that on there as well. Um, prop, proposition, this is the final one that is approved, will be on the ballot. This is number 11. Proposition 315, prohibit a proposed rule from become, becoming effective if the rule is... A, Estimated to increase regular, regulatory costs by more than $500,000 within five years after implementation. I don't know what that means. Here's the problem with these initiatives. What does that mean? Yeah, sometimes it would be helpful to have an, an example. Yeah, such as. So we'll dig into yeah. that one more. I can't give you a yes or no on that one yet. Um, but it sounds like if government does something that costs money or imposes extra fees or costs on others, then they need to do something about it. <laughs> so we'll d put a check mark next to that one as to, I don't know what the heck this means Yeah, because I'm reading these. I didn't research these. I just read the, the headlines because this is what most voters do. They just look, they're going to look at the yeah. headline and most people are going to read that and say, huh? Oh, that See, I'm sounds... the person that gets the book in the mail I and I read the whole thing I and I, I read through a handful of pro and against yeah. for and against arguments. And, yeah. and then I formulate my yes. final opinion. You are an informed voter. You should be voting. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, there's a lot of people that shouldn't be because they're uninformed voters. Yeah, they go and you shouldn't be voting and, on yeah. Proposition 315 when you read that and don't know what it means. We will break it down for you in over the next two months and figure out what it means. But this is our initial read of all these. And I'd say about, what, two thirds of these I can easily sum up and know how to vote for just by looking at them. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third here that we need to research more. Okay. Uh, the other one that's still in litigation is the Abortion Access Act Amendment. This is for full late-term California-style abortions in Arizona. Um, that one's being litigated right now. It's going to be on the ballot. I would bet as much money as I bet that Shapiro was going to be the vice presidential pick for Harris. 99.9% yeah. <laughs> .9 chance it'll be on the ballot. Well, and um, if the description that's in this thing we're looking at, ballotpedia.org, yeah. is what's on the ballot... Yeah, I don't know about that. It says, establishes the fundamental right to abortion that the state of Arizona may not interfere with before the point of fetal viability. Okay, yeah. well, that means like, How I many? mean, people think, well, a fetus isn't viable, you know, when you're 10 weeks or 12 weeks or 14, you know, whatever, there's a point where they're just not. You're saying the way they have the description worded, if people just read that on a single pass, there would be... A a large amount of people in this state that would unfortunately just vote for it. Yes. Yeah, but with that wording, but what they don't know at least and how I understand it is that there's an exception in that it, you could be past the point or 
Yeah, past the point of fetal viability, meaning that you're 32 weeks or 36 weeks and the fetus is viable at that point, but you can get a note from your doctor Uh, that allows it. Medical professional or something. Yeah. Could be like a psychiatrist. There's there's more to this than what that description says. And the description is concerning. We got an uphill battle on this one. Right, because people see that and they think, oh, well, you know, I'm okay with the, the... 12 weeks or yeah. whatever. Two more. Eliminate partisan primaries. Um, this is the um, this is the um, uh, ranked choice voting uh-huh. still uh-huh. in court. And a minimum wage initiative increases minimum wage again to $18 an hour. In- multiple year increases here coming up if this passes. Minimum wage in- increase initiative um, still in legal limbo. So there you have it. That's kind of our, that's 14. I think all 14 will be on there. 11 for sure. Um, we will break it down more and get into more detail on this as we get closer to the election and bring in people on this and really dive into the actual language um, because this is important that people know this stuff inside and out before they vote on it. All right, Diamond Auto Glass, they do the window tinting in your home. They do a great job. And um, we were talking about our triangular windows. Yeah. Maybe it's time for us to have Diamond Auto Glass come in and do that. It helps with privacy, helps with insulation issues. You, know, you got that plain window, you put something over it, it helps with um, that R rating a bit and, you know, getting, um, keeping the heat in, keeping the cool in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, plus, they've got decorative uh, things they can do on these window tinting as well. People have done a lot of stuff like that. So spice it up a little bit, right? Uh, Diamond Auto Glass also handles your vehicles. So talking to your autos, your your glass replacement, but also the rock chips that happen. And it's, yeah, it's, it's August right now, but before you know it, it's going to snow. <laughs> it's I just know. around the corner, I keep man. saying it's cold and yep. summer So you get a rock chip, you got you to fix that. You got to fix that quick. Give them a call, 928 979 4140. That's 928 779 4140. Give them a call and uh, have them come in, do an in home um, uh, price estimate for you for, for the window tinting or for any of your glass needs. That's the difference is clear.com. Diamond Auto Glass. All right, uh, final thoughts here in just a second. Hang tight. That's it. That's it. We did it. <laughs> Tomorrow, I have um, Congressman Andy Biggs. Oh, nice. It's been a few weeks, probably a few months since I've had an update yeah. from him, so I'm glad I saw him. I uh, chatted with him in D.C. a little bit here mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago. Um, so he reached out, and he's going to come on the show, give us a good D.C. update. Nothing to talk about there, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, subscribe to the podcast. Appreciate you doing that. Y'all have a great, safe night. Take care. See you soon. The information provided on The Jeff Orvitz Show does not constitute legal, medical, financial, or tax advice. All information is the opinions of the host and guests. You should always seek the advice of a professional regarding any of these complex issues to make sure all circumstances of your situation are properly considered. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orvitz Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. This is the Jeff Orbit Show.